Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Last year when I made my YouTube channel, one of the first videos I made was why did Zambia's young people vote for change? And in that video I discussed that the young people in that country were very tired of the high inflation rate and they were tired of the government not working for the people. So what they decided to do is that they changed the president. I mean that night will go down in Zambia's history because the young people that day, they took a stand. And today, they are finally being rewarded. Now here is a very interesting chart. The new president was elected on August. And as you can see, inflation rate was higher than 24% when he took power. Now, every month since, the inflation rate has gone down. And now, the inflation rate is in one single digit. Now, the inflation rate is about 9.7%. Next year is estimated to be around 7%. Now I remember in that video that I was saying that if Zambia fails to deal with the high inflation rate, that there will be some sort of a revolution. And I was imagining something that we are seeing in Sri Lanka right now. But that didn't happen in Zambia. Now what makes this absolutely amazing is the simple fact that in every single country around the world, except maybe China, the inflation rates has been going up. Now, if we take a look at the inflation rate in South Africa, it's around 6.5%, but that's actually gone up from around 5%. The inflation rate in Germany went from 3.6% to 7% at that same time. Now, the inflation rate in Estonia went from 10% to 20% during the same period, and Estonia it's an EU country. Inflation rate in Egypt is around 14%. So in every single country around the world, inflation rate has been going up. And the reason for it is simple. Higher gas prices, higher oil prices, and of course, higher food prices. So everything is becoming more expensive. But in Zambia, they've managed to actually lower the inflation rate. Now, of course, prices are still rising and in Zambia, still inflation exists. But the rate has come down. Now another thing, the Zambia's currency, the Kwacha, has gained almost 33% against the dollar in the last 12 months, making it the second best performing currency after the Russian ruble. So Zambia's currency in the last year has been the second best performing currency in the whole globe. Now that is another miracle which is absolutely amazing. And of course, lower inflation rate and higher value of their currency, it gives more opportunities to the government to actually support the economy and develop the country. So those are two things. Inflation is coming down and the value of the currency is going up. So here is another graph and this is Zambia's government debt to GDP. You can see that in 2014, it was quite low, but then the government just went overdrive. Now, in 2014, 4% of the government revenue was going to debt payments, you know, paying the interest and paying off the debt payment. But in 2020, 33% of the government's budget was going just to pay the interest and pay off the debt. And that's why in 2021, it just became unfeasible. They had the coronavirus and they just couldn't deal with it. Now, here is who Zambia actually owes money to. 10% of Zambia's debt is to World Bank. 9% is to other multilateral institutions like IMF and all these other Western thieving institutions. They also owe 27% to China. Now, a lot of people were talking about that last year, but China actually gave them leeway. The reason why they defaulted is the private lending. 50% of Zambia's debt is owned by private lenders and the government couldn't pay these private lenders last year, so they defaulted. This private lending problem is something that the Zambia's government is actually dealing with because they've been cancelling a lot of the projects that were funded by private lending. Today, they cancelled $2 billion worth of projects that were supposed to be funded by private lenders so they understand the risks and they do not want to fall in that same trap again now currently they're going through a debt 
restructuring package and the president has called that the debt should be reduced and most likely he will be able to achieve that. Now there are two things that Zambia's government is actually currently doing to make sure that they do not end up in this kind of situation. Now the first one is that they are implementing a new law. It hasn't yet passed but they are now talking about it. Most likely it will be passed and they want to make sure that the parliament oversees borrowing. Let me show you this graph again. As you can see from 2014, the debt just exploded. To make sure that that doesn't happen, that no president has that kind of power again, what they are doing is they want to bring borrowing under the parliament instead of giving full authority to the president. Now, another thing that the president has been doing, he's been traveling around the world, he's been making all kinds of deals. Now, Zambia's main export has been copper and Zambia has been over-relying on it. What he has done is he has started exporting avocados to United Arab Emirates, to EU, and he's opening new exporting markets for the agriculture products produced in Zambia. So the man is doing an amazing job. If you do not follow the Zambia's president, President Hichilema, on Twitter, I will tell you to go and follow him. He is absolutely amazing. And he's very inspirational. Now, what I like about him the most is that he talks about policy. He will tell you that this is how we are going to improve the lives of the students. This is how we're going to support the government employees. These are the policies my government will implement. That's very different than a lot of the African leaders who every now and then they will give you a very beautiful speech. But the, at the end of the day, they will never tell you what are their policies. So go and follow him. I'm sure you'll like. Now, anyways, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please do remember to subscribe, like, share, and comment.